Keyshawn Davis versus Jose Pedraza. 10 rounds in the 135-pound division. Let's get into it. Let's start with Keyshawn Davis. 10 wins, no losses, 6 wins by way of knockout. But now that I said that, I think it is not 10 wins. It is 9 wins because one was a no contest in his last fight because of what happened and the outside stuff. I even forgot what the reason was. But nonetheless, it is one no contest. So he has nine wins, uh, six wins by way of knockout. But even though he won that fight, it's beside the point. The stats are the stats. So we move forward. I've 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 said it before in every in almost every Keyshawn Davis video that I have done. I think this man has the makings to be a champion, a world champion down the road. He has that talent and that skill. But his first six fights, I mean, he looked very good in doing it, right? He beat everybody by way of knockout. I saw him fight when he fought Omar Tienda uh, in 2022, and the man did his thing, right? I had heard a lot about him, but when I got to see him live, I was like, okay, man, this man, this man does everything really well. Like, he's a solid fighter. You know, sometimes you hear about young talent, and it can seem like they're a little bit overhyped, so to speak. But from what I've seen to that six fight seven five point i'm like okay maybe what they're saying about him like you can see it i thought things started to pick up when he fought juan bargos and he did put a beating on bargos right even though he wasn't able to get a stoppage that was a fight where we got to see his full repertoire on display right the the speed the the quick hands the placement in his punches I think he has an underrated jab. I like the straight hand when he pushes that down anytime as well, too. And you got to see against Burgos, you got to see the defense, his counter punching ability, right? The head movement as well. I thought he did everything very well in that fight. And he was close to getting the knockout against Burgos in the seventh round, right? But he wasn't able to capitalize it and to close out the show. And it's also noticeable to add, too, that Burgos has never been knocked out before. And he's fought some good opponents, right? So something to keep in mind. But I thought that was one of Keyshawn Davis's best complete performance that we've seen at that point. After that, he goes on to face Anthony Yigit, and he put a complete beating on Anthony Yigit, right? Not, not a half beating, <laughs> but like a full beating, a, a complete beating. Uh, Keyshawn showed his skill once again he used using his strength using his size to advantage right the the volume in his punchers he looked very sharp that night is the best way that i would put it very sharp that night probably the sharpest that we've seen him right and in my opinion you know he 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 looked great against a quality opponent after that he fought francisco patera uh, a lot of people thought it was a great performance from Keyshawn davis and i'm not saying it wasn't Right, because I thought he fought very well. Drop Patera in the eighth round with a beautiful counter right hand. Had Patera blowing bubbles as he was trying to get up, as he was falling as well too. Patera was able to make it the full fight. He was able to get back up, pick himself up, keep composed, and make it the full ten rounds. Keyshawn dominated that fight, but I also got the sense, man, he didn't quite fully turn it up. You know what I'm saying? Like he was in complete control, and that was a dominant fight. But it looked like he found a gear that he was comfortable in and just kind of stayed there. You know, maybe he was just getting some rounds in, right? Maybe he was working on some things. And if that was the case, then disregard everything that I was saying. But it wasn't, it just looked like to me, man, he, he, he was comfortable in what he was doing. And he just kind of stayed there and didn't feel like he needed to really step it up and to, because I thought he could have stopped Patera. He didn't have to make that man last 10 rounds, right? I thought he could have turned on the pressure, be more aggressive, and just really let his hands go a little bit more because he could have done whatever he wanted to do in that fight. Credit, No disrespect to Patera from what he was doing, but Davis was in complete control of the fight, and it just felt like he was good with that. Again, maybe he was working on some step, whatever the case may be, but I just felt like, man, you could have turned it up just a little bit more and gotten that seven stoppage. Nonetheless, Another very, very good performance from Keyshawn Davis. Now, after that fight, he fought Nahir Albright, who was a solid opponent, not as skilled as Keyshawn, but athletic, quick, 
good counter puncher and he could move and, and and it would make it a little bit more tougher for Keyshawn fighting an athletic fighter it took Keyshawn some rounds to kind of get going right his defense was solid the angle changes he took were on point the shot selection was on point but Albright's athleticism took a little bit of it it took Keyshawn out of rhythm a little bit I felt like I thought Keyshawn buzzed him in that sixth round but was never fully able to really capitalize on it, right? But towards the end of the rounds, in the eighth round, man, Albright, man, he caught Keyshawn coming in. Keyshawn came in a little bit too aggressive, and Albright caught him with a counter right hand that landed cleanly on his chin. And after that, man, it just looked like Keyshawn was a little bit hesitant. He wasn't going with that same aggression. He was kind of just being complacent with where the fight was and where his positioning was because that shot definitely hurt him. You could feel it, which is why his whole tactics kind of changed. Now, he still get, he still got the win. He still did it. He still did his thing. But it just wasn't that same aggressive Keyshawn or tapped in Keyshawn that we saw towards the end of the fight compared to how well he was doing in the first six rounds, right? So interesting dynamics to it. Albright is an athletic fighter. He's a good, solid fighter, and he can make it tough for anybody. But stylistically, that was a fight that, man, the movement, the speed, speed of Albright kind of knocked Keyshawn's rhythm and flow off a little bit. But towards the end of that fight, you could see Keyshawn was really starting to put defense a priority and he made some very good adjustments. Now, he's someone that says he wants to fight the champions right now in this moment. As much as I like Keyshawn, he's not at that level yet, right? I think I want to see a little bit more before he gets there, but he can definitely get there. He's on the right track and he can get that thing started against a proven fighter in Jose Pedraza. Let's talk about his opponent, Sniper Pedraza. 29 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw, 14 wins by way of Naga. The former champion has been around for a while in this sport, 34 years old. He's been a champion in two divisions, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong in that. He's fought great opposition. His losses came from when he fought Gervonta Tang Davis in 2017. I believe he got stopped in the seventh round in that fight. He lost to uh, Vasily Lomachenko the following year. Uh, he lost to Jose Zapata in 2019, Jose Ramirez in 2022, when he fought Richard Comey in a draw last year and he lost to Arnold Barbosa by decision. His losses come from quality opposition, but a loss is a loss. And when you look at his record and you say, wait a minute, he has five losses. And so will he get another title shot? These are all things that you're thinking about, right? He's probably not going to get another title shot, but we can't rule anything out. Right. So technically, when you look at his resume and his record, he has not won a fight since 2021. In his last few fights, he's 0, 2, and 1 in his last three fights. So it just makes you think him coming off a loss right now is the perfect moment for Keyshawn to be able to capitalize on it. Doesn't mean that he will. But he can't take Pedraza for granted. He's a he's a sharp shooter is what I would call him, which is probably why he got the nickname Sniper, right? He's accurate, uh, quick with his counters, good timing when he settled in and in his groove, right? When he fought um, Jose Ramirez, that was one of his best performers to date, in my opinion, even though he lost. Ramirez would go on to get the unanimous decision victory. I don't argue Ramirez won the fight, but there were some close rounds and Pedraza was doing some nice work. Right, his counters were accurate. His jab was pinpoint. His footwork was very good, and he was throwing very good combination. And he was always aware of where he was inside of the ring. And Ramirez was is an aggressive fighter. He throws a lot of punches, but not all of those shots were getting through because of the awareness and the defensive prowl of what Pedraza was doing. Pedraza was bobbing and weaving some of those shots, man, putting that shoulder roll and bobbing shots, and he was able to have success because Ramirez was trying to bulldoze his way in, right? Just coming forward, but Pedraza would made him capitalize on it. He's like, yo, I've seen this style before, right? So he was able to actually find Ramirez's timing and he was landing very good counter shots and he was able to have an answer or evade some of what Ramirez was doing. Now, when Ramirez was landing shots, yeah, Pedraza felt that Ramirez, the man can punch. He's got good power, right? 
but I don't think he respected the power of what was coming back at him for him to really not think that his style wasn't going to break Pedraza down at some point because he came forward every single round. But it was a closer fight than the scorecard said, in my opinion, right? It was a great performance from Pedraza, even though he lost the fight. I wouldn't say it was unanimous decision victory, man. I would say majority decision, split decision. But nonetheless, uh, Pedraza lost the fight, so we moved forward. After that, he faced Richard Comey, and that was a fight that turned out to be an exciting one. It was a great matchup for where both of these men were in their career at this stage, right? If As far as bigger paydays and bigger fights and trying to escape that gatekeeper title so to speak right like these two threw a whole lot of punches in this fight something that i was not really expecting from pedraza to be throwing this much i don't remember it fully but i believe both men it was over a thousand maybe even 1100 punches that's a lot of punches combined right i thought pedraza won the last two rounds and i would have given him that win but I'm not mad at the draw either for her for however that the officials and the refs saw it, right? But it was an entertaining fight between two former champions in their own right at similar stages in their career. We saw, I saw a much more offensive sniper Pedraza instead of just that one that was leaning on his counter punching ability and waiting for his opponents to make mistakes. I like that version of Pedraza, honestly, because it gives him a better opportunity for the judges to see that he can dictate the pace of the fight as well. After that fight, he fought Arnold Barboza Jr. While Pedraza has some good moments in the fight, man, Barboza just outboxed him all night. The speed, the movement, the jab, uh, the 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 volume, the combinations behind the jab, using the straight hand, it just was. Barboza put forth a beautifully offensive boxing display of his total skill set and his package. He was able to keep Pedraza at distance, never really letting Pedraza get comfortable in anything. Right, Barbosa's skills won him that fight, and he didn't really face too much resistance. I thought he was in control for the majority of that fight. Uh, Barbosa, with his footwork and his volume, just outworked Pedraza. Pedraza had some moments, right, and and he came on late in the fight, applied good pressure, and was able to give Barbosa a little bit of you know strain and worry late in the fight, but it wasn't too consistent throughout the fight. But you could see the speed and the footwork uh, of Barbosa was a problem for Pedraza in that fight. And it even just makes you think, right? Like the younger fighter in Keyshawn Davis, who has that natural athleticism, who has good footwork and who is fast, not only in his feet, but his hand speed as well, too. He, he might even be faster than Barbosa in some ways. So we'll see what version of Pedraza that we get to see in this fight. And also what version of Keyshawn do we see in this fight? So who wins? I think Keyshawn's, I think this is Keyshawn's toughest test yet. And it's gonna say a lot about him moving forward, in my opinion. Pedraza is a quality opponent. He's got five losses, yet he doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy work for Keyshawn Davis by no means. Pedraza has the experience and the skill to give Keyshawn problems and make it a tough night for him, but from the last outing of Pedraza, the speed, the movement, the hand speed could be something that bites him in this fight, man. So I like Keyshawn Davis to win this fight by decision. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Man, I appreciate each of you. Shout out to all the members holding down the membership section. I appreciate each of you. We are almost at 5,000 subscribers on the channel, man. Shout out to each of you for taking the time for rocking with me since day one or whether you just found the channel i appreciate each of you so with all that being said if you've been watching the video this time do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time